Before we dive into today's case, a big thanks to our sponsor, Aura. In today's digital age, it's easier than ever for hackers to steal personal information. A recent massive data hack exposed social security numbers, names, addresses and dates of birth, affecting nearly all Americans. Hackers stole 2.9 billion records from national public data, releasing them online for free. Despite having security measures, our data is more vulnerable than ever. I've had my bank account hacked in the past, but I feel completely protected now that I'm using Aura. Aura is a security service that protects your data, devices, and internet connection under one subscription. With real-time alerts for data breaches and fraud, Aura helps you take immediate action. It also offers malware protection and secure browsing, ensuring you can shop, bank, and stream safely. Aura includes up to $5 million in identity theft insurance and a US-based customer support team. Protect yourself and your sensitive data with Aura. Try Aura today with a 14-day free trial by visiting aura.com forward slash dark curiosities. Thanks again to Aura for sponsoring this video. The disappearance of Sarah and Jacob Hoggle is a tragic case that has haunted their family and community for over a decade. Both children went missing in September 2014, at the ages of three and two respectively, from Gaithersburg, Maryland. The circumstances surrounding their disappearance remain shrouded in mystery, though they are suspected to have been abducted by their mother, Catherine Hoggle, who had been struggling with severe mental illness, including paranoid schizophrenia. In the days leading up to the disappearance, Catherine Hoggle, aged 31, had been living with her long-term partner and the father of the children, Troy Turner. Catherine's mental health struggles were well known to the family, she had been diagnosed with paranoid schizophrenia in 2013 and was undergoing treatment, including hospitalisation and medication. Although she had shown signs of progress in managing her illness, her condition remained volatile. On the day of the incident, September 7th, 2014, at around 4pm, Catherine borrowed her father's 2007 Nissan Rogue to take Jacob to get pizza. When she returned without him, she claimed to have left him at a friend's house, a story her parents initially believed. Later that night, Catherine returned home, as did Troy, around midnight after finishing his shift at work. He noticed that Jacob wasn't asleep in bed, however assumed he'd gone to sleep with one of his siblings, as he often did. The next morning, when Troy awoke, he realised only their eldest child was home, and Sarah and Jacob were missing. Sarah had last been seen around 9.30pm the previous night. As Troy realised his children were gone, he decided to call the police, but Catherine pulled up outside his residence and told Troy she had dropped the children off at a daycare in Germantown. Troy told police it was a false alarm and ended the call. Troy then took Catherine to her daily treatment program, which ended around 2pm. From there, Troy suggested they pick up their children, to which Catherine told him she could not recall the name of the daycare centre, but she would try her best to direct him there. Troy continued to question her about the whereabouts of Sarah and Jacob, but she was evasive, causing suspicions to arise. As the situation escalated, Catherine fled from a Chick-fil-A restaurant where Troy had taken her for a drink, sneaking out of another exit without him seeing. Troy then decided to call the police shortly thereafter, greatly concerned for the well-being of his children. 
After she scarpered from the Chick-fil-A, Catherine was missing for four days before she was found, walking in Germantown, Maryland. However, she did not provide useful information about the whereabouts of Sarah and Jacob. Initially, she claimed to have left the children with a high school friend named Erin, but later misled police, telling them she abandoned them at a playground. Despite these conflicting stories, the children were never found. Catherine was arrested and charged with parental abduction, neglect and hindering a police investigation. However, due to her deteriorating mental condition, she was deemed unfit to stand trial and was committed to Clifton T. Perkins Hospital, a maximum security psychiatric facility in Jessup. Doctors at the facility found her mentally incompetent for trial, even as the investigation continued to stagnate in the following years. In September 2017, three years after Sarah and Jacob disappeared, Catherine was formally charged with two counts of murder, though she remained in psychiatric confinement without standing trial. This charge gave hope to the children's father and the rest of the family, who believed Catherine knew where the children were and was intentionally withholding information. The legal proceedings surrounding the case have been frustrating for the family. Due to Catherine's mental incompetence, the murder charges were dropped in 2022 after years of legal back and forth. Under Maryland laws, a person charged with misdemeanors who is found incompetent can only be held for up to three years, while felony charges allow for a five-year maximum. Although she was charged with murder, her condition remained unchanged and as a result, the case has been stuck in limbo. While the charges were dismissed, Catherine remains under civil commitment at the psychiatric hospital and she is still considered a danger to herself and others. Diagnosed with schizophrenia, major depressive disorder and generalised anxiety disorder, her mental state has complicated the investigation from the beginning. The children's father, Troy Turner, has been vocal about his frustration with the slow progress in the case. He continues to believe that Catherine is manipulating the system by exaggerating her mental illness to avoid prosecution. Turner, who once described Catherine as a highly intelligent woman, feels that she is purposely refusing to disclose the children's whereabouts. Despite these beliefs, law enforcement remains constrained by Catherine's legal and medical status. Vigils and public efforts to raise awareness about Sarah and Jacob's disappearance have taken place over the years, with family members and community supporters continuing to push for answers across social media and beyond. However, with no physical evidence indicating what happened to the children, authorities remain unable to conclude the case. Law enforcement, despite their suspicions of foul play, have not found any remains or John or Jane Doe's who match their descriptions, and sadly the children's fate remains unclear. In an effort to bring new life into the investigation, age progression images of Sarah and Jacob were created in the years following their disappearances, with the most recent being released in September 2024, showing what they might look like 10 years after they went missing. These images, created by forensic artists, serve as a tool for the public to help identify the children, should they still be alive. The images have already been shared widely on social media and by organisations like the National Centre for Missing and Exploited Children in the hopes of generating new leads. Despite these efforts, the case remains unsolved. The community, as well as Sarah and Jacob's extended family, has not given up hope even as the years have passed. The missing children's cases are still open, with both law enforcement and the family suspecting foul play. The hope is that someone, somewhere, might come forward with information that could finally bring resolution to this heartbreaking case. 
The disappearance of Sarah and Jacob Hoggle has left a lasting impact on their family and the community of Gaithersburg, Maryland. Their mother's mental illness has posed significant challenges to the investigation, and despite the charges against her, Catherine Hoggle's legal status continues to impede justice. As their family holds on to hope for answers, the rest of the world watches, waiting for closure on a case that has lasted for over a decade. The mystery surrounding Sarah and Jacob's fate remains, but their father's fight for justice persists, ensuring that their story will not be forgotten. At the time of their disappearances in September of 2014, Sarah Grace Hoggle was three years old. She's described as being biracial, specifically African-American and Caucasian, with brown hair and brown eyes, standing at 3 foot 6 inches tall and weighing 40 pounds. She was last seen wearing a pink tank top and a pair of blue shorts. If alive today, Sarah would be 13 years old. Her brother, Jacob Gabriel Hoggle, was two years old at the time of his disappearance. He is also described as mixed race, African American and Caucasian, with light brown to blonde hair and brown eyes, standing at three feet tall and weighing 30 pounds. He was last seen wearing a white shirt and a pair of blue shorts. If alive today, Jacob would be 12 years old. Anyone with any information regarding the disappearances of Sarah and Jacob Hoggle are urged to contact Montgomery County Police Department at 301-279-8000 or NECMEC at 1-800-843-5688.